Hey guys, welcome back to the Snapper and Chronicles. Today we're coming back at you with another Ratchet video. Okay, this time something uh, kind of from the back wall of Ratchets, I would say. It's another Crescent. Uh, I did, I think, a Crescent a few weeks ago. Another Crescent. Another, another different design than this one. Uh, with some slight similarities to this one. But this one, I think they... Uh, I don't know, they were trying new stuff, or... Uh, this one is Crescent, but it happens to be made by Wright. And it has an E. And I'm assuming that's the right uh, date code. And an E stands for 1965. And this one is the CT70. But before we jump into it, if you can do me a favor and hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel if you find any of this at all helpful or maybe even slightly entertaining. Okay, uh, like I said, this is the CT70. And I think they had different models of this. Uh, same, I could be wrong, but I think if memory serves... They, they use these numbers on different uh, mechanisms and models. And like I said, this is a product of Wright uh, made for Crescent Company. Crescent uh, made a lot of good tools, but Ratchets was not their forte uh, back in the day. So... Here's a bit of the knurling on the handle. This is a 3 eighths model. It's 3 eighths, and the knurling is not so great. Uh, kind of flat. The lines here are kind of uh, sloppy. Kind of willy-nilly there. And the way they, uh, they form this edge here is not crisp at all <laughs> you see how it kind of goes up and down and waves moves this way and that way the end uh, kind of the same the lines kind of fade in and out there some are deep over here they're barely hair hair thin take a look at the bottom and Let's uh, jump right into this. Uh, to take this apart, you're going to need a, obviously, a screwdriver and a Phillips. Uh, what I do is I take first the switch screw off. And this is what the switch screw looks like. I'm not sure. I'm... Assuming these are original screws, I can't say for sure. They they do look original though. And here's the switch. The switch is has a sort of a squarish uh, kind of uh, opening there. Uh, two of the sides are flat, and you can put it on either way. On this this one this protrusion for the switch is definitely squared with round edges so this will fit any which way you put it on there it has the two flat sides you can see there and that's a look at the profile it's kind of like uh, the switch is kind of has this kind of slope here that's pretty good they took uh, they had uh, added some attention to detail there and now this is kind of a box this plate comes out when we unscrew these uh, these two screws here But hold it together because when you take these screws off, that plate is going to want to fall out. And uh, there's some parts in here. 
you might not want to uh, you might not want to lose this is what the screws look like kind of no Loctite or anything uh, these are you know back in the day I don't think they use Loctite much okay now this part comes down and here is your mechanism and over here we have the cap and it's just looks a little rough on the edges this cap That's what that looks like. And this is a pretty coarse uh, ratchet. I think there were 22 or 24 teeth on this. You can see how big the teeth are here. Uh, yeah, pretty coarse. For its, even for its age, um, 65, uh, your average ratchet usually had like over 30 teeth by then so this one still had uh, a number in the 20s there's a cutout here and a cutout there this might be uh, I might be able to put this together anyway but I usually go with how it came the letters on the switch side opposite the anvil so that's the way I'm gonna put it back together but that's a look inside and here's the mechanism uh yeah check that out uh a, a bit different than what you expect in a round head ratchet being that like 90 percent of round heads follow um dsk style design Here's a um, here's the post for the switch, and here's a big plunger, and a plunger. Let me see if I can do this. I might need to switch. The plunger holds the pole against the teeth there, there, and then it has this wire here that when you switch it, it swings this pole in and as that pole goes out here it is kind of in the middle and here it is yeah you didn't get to see that because the switch was in the way but now you see that the the pole the opposite pole sticking out and the plunger is pushing against that and the wire uh, brought the other pole around to the inside and here is the wire. Here's the wire. This is what that looks like. Nothing complicated there. It has protrusions on either end. And here is the switch with this huge plunger. It looks <coughs> looks like a 32, 32 bullet or something, or 38 or something. And here is the switch barrel, and you see how big that hole is that holds the plunger. Inside it's hollow. It has this really, really stiff spring, really thick, stiff spring inside the plunger. And the plunger, like I said, it's hollow. And it's pretty deep. Okay, here are your paws. They go into holes that are machined into 
the housing and these are the poles this this protrusion goes in those holes and you can see it's a two two tooth pole there this would uh, face that way against the wall against the teeth with the wire hanging there Kind of an interesting pole. Uh, looks kind of well machined. Looks a little, I don't know, a bit different, but kind of similar to uh, other poles. Kind of reminds me slightly of uh, the Proto uh, double pole 59 series. I mean, 49 series. But uh, they kind of look a little bit like this but slightly different principles but they use it's the paw two paws with the protrusion to put it in the hole to keep it stable but um yeah pretty different and here's the housing the housing looks pretty well machined there's a number here i don't know what it's for but it's a well-defined number. It's three nine one two, and it looks well machined. Actually, this ratchet looks better on the inside than it does on the outside, uh, which is usually the opposite of ratchets. A lot of times, usually, the outsides look good, and the insides kind of look sloppy sometimes. But this one's pretty good. This is where the switch goes and the poles right there and the screws go into there. Here's the anvil and a well-centered uh, detent ball. Okay, to get this back together. Uh, get your poles and make sure that this part goes inside the hole and it's the right side for the pole to orient it correctly the teeth have to face out like that and look like that when they're facing out like this the small one out and the tall one like that now you take your switch your spring and your big plunger and you put that in there and you seat that like that like you would a regular uh, plunger but this one's bigger so it's probably better to handle and you put that back in the hole like this <clears throat> now you grab your wire And the curve, the curve of the wire goes like that. It follows that curve over here. And this, uh, you stick it in that hole. And then you swing it around and you get it into that hole like that. It should look like that. Now you put it in the mechanism. Uh, remember the anvil facing down and the letters facing up. Now you put your cap on. Uh, the holes in the cap, you see the two holes on the one, two. They have to uh, correspond to those holes. So make sure you line them up like that. Hold the mechanism and the cap. Turn that over and now you get your screws in.
tighten them down. Don't go crazy. Now you take your switch and you put it on top there. You take your switch screw and now you tighten down your switch screw and your switch and you see it's working it has a light back drag but you can hear how <laughs> you can hear how uh, coarse that is and you switch it see if it's switching and there you go yeah, that's the teardown and the review of this Crescent CT70 from 1965. Interesting design. Uh, I kind of like it. I like any ratchet that's different. Looks uh, pretty good on the inside. Some of the outside doesn't look as good. But, uh, I don't know, kind of a interesting little ratchet. Okay, guys, until next time.